Hey everyone. Good morning. Welcome to day three of the Weiner Wellness Week Fall Fiesta. We have Joe Messino here with us talking about a really important topic. If you were just listening, me and Jamie uh, were on and Jamie was talking about detox, cleansing the body. He went through the Remove Complete Kit, uh, but talked a lot about some of the things that we're exposed to. Um, heavy metals is one of them. Joe's going to talk about fluoride in particular. And I love his title. It's called Fluoride, the Enemy Within. And um, he's going to focus on the pineal gland. And I think he's got something special he's going to share with everyone. I don't know if he was just sharing it with me, but <laughs> we'll see. So um, welcome, Joe. Good morning. Good morning, Kansas. Hey. It's been going pretty good. A lot of great talks so far. And um, this is a fun one. This is a new one that I, I haven't done. This is a brand new workshop for me. Uh, so I thought I'd bring out something new this time. Uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about the, you know, the, the enemy within and we're gonna talk about it specifically in, re, in regard to the pineal gland. Now, you know, we've talked about the endocrine system. And we've talked about it, you know, a lot. We've talked about, you know, what we term the fat axis, right? The, and that's spelled P-H-A-T. So that stands for pituitary, hypothalamus, adrenal, and thyroid. Now, they're all part of the endocrine system, but there's another gland that's part of the endocrine system. And that's the pineal gland. And it really is underappreciated, it gets neglected. Uh, and I think there's probably a good reason why it gets neglected. And <clears throat> it, it, it's, you know, if you've ever heard the term, your third eye, and I know a lot of people have, right? You've heard of it. You know, that's not just a mystical thing. The, uh, the third eye, the body's third eye has long been thought to be the actual pineal gland. Now, and on some folklore and in some histories, Candace, you can go back and they even believe that the pineal gland started out as an actual eye, a third eye. And over time, yeah, evolved into being the gland that it is today. Now, I don't know about that, but I think it's more of a I think it's more of a metaphysical thing. Um, we know the pineal gland exists, okay? It's a very, very small gland about, it's an acorn, it's shaped like an acorn, but it's right dead center in the brain. Okay, there it is, right dead center in the brain. And it's there, and there's where you get the connection for third eye. So if you look at two halves of your head and your brain, right smack dab in the middle where that third eye would be, right between the eyes, right at the top of the nose and set back in the brain is where our pineal gland rests. Now, you know, you can go to the, to the next side. It looks, it looks, you know, this is just another view of what the pineal gland looks like. Now I have a little, <laughs> I have a little typo on this slide, Candace. Um, it produces dimethyl, aniline, okay, uh, not DMT, it's DMA. That might have been a little Freudian slip for me because DMT is known as the God particle. And it's also uh, pretty, it, there, there is some ties with DMT at uh, Trip Allen, but it's, um, it's more of a synthetic. And uh, anyway, I didn't mean to put that in there. So it's a little slip, but uh, we'll get back to the God particle thing in a, in a little bit. So this is pretty much, now on the left, you see an acorn. On the right, you see a, an artist rendering of the pineal gland. Now, and it does have the two arteries coming off, but they then extend out to both hemispheres of the brain. Um, and that's important because there's a tie to the with the pineal gland to, to not just the endocrine system, but to so many other systems in the body. This tiny little gland is so important and so vital, yet we treat it with such disrespect with what we do to it. So <clears throat> there was, um, 
And actually, if we go a couple slides, yeah, let's just move up. There's our third eye, pineal gland. But um, Rene Descartes, if you go back to your college days and your philosophy days, Candace, you remember Descartes, right? He was a, uh, a very, very famous uh, philosopher, I mean, from the early centuries. And this is a quote directly from him. Um, he says that the pineal gland, now remember when this was, we're going back, I mean, uh, to the, the 1500s. But he said, the pineal gland is the seat of the soul, the place in which all our thoughts are formed. Now, he came to this conclusion because as he studied the brain, he noticed, you know, there were practically two sides to just about everything. So you have the two hemispheres of the brain. You have two eyes to see one object. You have two ears to hear one thought. Okay. And you have your body is like a mirror image of itself all the way down, except you only have one pineal gland. So hit the importance of the pineal gland, he referred to as the seat of the soul, where our thoughts are formed, our soul. You know, if you think about it, and when people hear the, the term third eye or sixth sense, you know, you can start to see now the connection here of what's going on. People that are mm, intuitive, you know, maybe they have a, a more uh, a developed sixth sense than the rest of us do. You know, and maybe when you, you hear that term third eye and you think about things like, you know, intuition, and you think about things like gut feeling, you know, we talk about the gut brain connection all the time, right? Well, the pineal glands in the brain. Okay. But when you think about that and your thoughts and your dreams, and, you know, we can go on and on and on into that stuff. Well, where does it all start? The dreams, the thoughts, many think it starts right there in this tiny little gland called the pineal gland. So, you know, when people, you know, talk about, oh, you know, we're, we're losing, uh, you know, mindful evolution. I wonder if there's a cause. Of course, we know there's always a cause, right? There's always a cause to, to what's going on in our bodies. So what are we doing? What are we doing to cause this to diminish? Well, it's important because the pineal gland, okay, maybe it's the seat of the soul. Maybe it's where your thoughts are formed but it's also responsible for regulating some major um, issues in the body. REM sleep, REM sleep, okay? That comes from the pineal gland because it regulates the production of melatonin. We talk about melatonin all the time, okay? But without the pineal gland, we can't make sufficient melatonin. And, you know, melatonin, I don't think, gets talked about enough either because people relate it to sleep, right? Yeah, to the internal clock, to the circadian rhythm of your body. But it's also a master antioxidant in the body. And that doesn't get talked about enough. Melatonin is responsible for so many functions in the body. And then as we go down the list for the pineal gland, okay, part of the endocrine system, right? We know the endocrine system is all about hormone production, regulation, and optimization. So what we're seeing is a change in the onset of puberty, especially in girls, in young girls, if there is a uh, detrimental effect on the pineal gland. Now, we know, let's go, let's, let's talk about that for a second. We've seen girls maturing a lot faster these days than they did 20, 30, 50, 100 years ago. You know, breast development, menstruation cycles, all of those things are happening a lot faster. Now, those are hormonal issues. I'm sure part of it, maybe a big part of it, comes from diet, comes from the onslaught of estrogens in our body that we're exposed to, both uh, in diet and both uh, in an environment the estrogens in, in milk and these kids drinking milk and eating the animal products that have estrogens loaded into them. I'm sure that has an effect on the onset of puberty. But another effect is coming from the deregulation of the pineal gland. 
So it starts that young. It starts in our kids. And, you know, there's, um, there's kids that are, are thought to be special. Have you ever heard the term um, sky children? You know, they have a very evolved sense of mm, uh, their pineal gland is through probably pr producing through the roof. Very big on intuition. Now let's go down the list. Alzheimer's. All right, there you go. Brain related. It increases Alzheimer's risk. As we age, the more that the pineal gland is calcified, the more damage it's going to do. Hormonal imbalances all over the place. And again, without proper production of melatonin, which we don't necessarily always think about when we think about antioxidants, there's gonna be major free radical damage. So all of these things are a result of a pineal gland that becomes inactive. So what killed it? This is the big the question. Uh, if we had Hercule Poirot here, he'd be looking for the killer of the pineal gland. And the bad part is, it's something that we've been doing every day, all of our lives. It's actually, you know, something that we think we can't live without every day, but it's the major source of calcification. It comes in a very simple form. And usually that's the biggest uh, or the, the most powerful enemy is the one you don't recognize or the one you don't suspect. It's our drinking water. Fluoridated drinking water is loaded with sodium fluoride. Even to this day, Candace, you know, we've been talking about fluoride. I mean, we know fluoride is one of the top three toxins that we're exposed to on a regular basis. But not only is it in tap water, but it's in many pharmaceuticals, including antibiotics. Now, have we been overusing antibiotics over the years? Of course we have. How about nonstick cookware? I remember when, when it first came out. You've probably lived with it your whole life. Well, of course, with your mom, probably not, because she's so, she's so in tune to these things. But Nonstick cookware was the rage. And that Teflon is loaded with chemicals, one of them being sodium fluoride. So as they wear out on all, every time you cook something, every time you heat it, guess where it's going? Right into your body. So look at this, water, food, and drugs, pharmaceuticals. These are three staples, Candace, to 99% of the population out there. We know how many seniors are on medications. We know, the, we know the, the statistics that anyone that in this country, if you're over 60 years old, you're on an average of 12 medications. Most people anyway. People still use nonstick cookware. You see it on all the cooking shows. I know I do. I don't use it. We stopped using it a long time ago. There's alternatives. Now, let's go down this list again, tap water. When you think about that, and someone says, well, I buy bottled water. Okay, but let's, let's drill down on that a little bit. You know, um, how do you make your ice cubes? You know, I still see people, right? They drink bottled water, but they go to make an ice cube tray and they put it under the faucet, All right? So you're using it there. What about cooking? How many people actually cook with bottled water or filtered water? Probably not that many. They drink it. Yep, they got that water bottle in their car. They got it on the trail. They have it at their desk. But when it comes time to cooking, you know, boiling water, Candace, doesn't remove fluoride. Okay, so if you think you're boiling it and it's fine, no. You're better off with distilled water. And then, you know, I was buying filters for a while and running distilled water through the filters, adding some minerals back in. And then I found what I think so is the best filter I've ever found. It's called Aqua Gear, and it removes fluoride and chloride from your water. 
it's amazing and it's not that expensive either and it's a filter that removes those two top toxins so i don't have to buy distilled water anymore but you know what i do candace i take that filter it's a big um big um you know pitcher with the filter in it and you know i i love mineral water like italian mineral water like pellegrino and even some of the more generic ones and i buy them in glass bottles and i i use my my filter it takes out the fluoride and i fill glass bottles full of that water and i have them stacked all through my kitchen <laughs> so when i make my espresso in the morning i use my filtered water when i cook i use filtered water these are some changes that you really should make because the only thing you can control is what's in your house. What's in your house, in your control. Because when you go out, you're getting nothing but fluoridated water. When you go buy your Starbucks, you're getting fluoridated tap water. When you go to a restaurant, you're getting fluoridated tap water. When you go anywhere that uses water that you're going to have a drink or food with, it's fluoridated water. Go get your iced tea, go get your hot tea, whatever. You're still getting it. So you have to control it where you can, and that's in your house. So pharmaceuticals. We talked about antibiotics. Huge amount of antibiotics in use. Many of them have fluoride in them as one of the, as one of the components. Why? Who knows? Maybe it's that, you know, that conspiracy theory that's, uh, that's, that's circulating all over the place or one of them. Nonstick cookware. You know, you can get ceramic, stainless steel, copper. None of these have sodium fluoride in them. Do you have a favorite you use at home? Yeah, I have a set. I, I mean, I got a set from Costco that is, it's stick cookware. I don't know what the technical term for it is. Um, but I just coat it with coconut oil and that mm -hmm. works um, or as you're cooking, sometimes things may stick at the beginning, but as you're cooking, it all mixes in and it's fine. I've been using it for years and I've never had an issue. Um, I do have another one. Um, I think it's similar to the copper. It's called Orgreenix is the brand. Yes. And, is it um, green? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I, I've had, I have those I pretty too. much only use that one for my eggs in the morning, um, unless I'm making something unique or maybe heating something up that I know will stick. But the stick where the stick cookware, you know, people hate it, but it's really not that difficult to use or to clean. No. So you just have to make the decision that it's going to be better for you. Yeah. And cast iron is a great choice. Yeah, of course. Okay. I yeah, I too. love. Yeah, I love cast iron. That's a great choice. No kitchen should be out be without a cast iron skillet. Um, but there are alternatives, folks. So you know, start replacing your nonstick cookware because it's poisoning you. Okay, three top things you're in control of: the water you drink, the water you cook with, the pharmaceuticals that you put in your body and the cookware you use in your house. If you can take those three steps, you'll make major strides in uh, eliminating the amount of fluoride you're exposed to. Okay, <clears throat> let's go to the next slide. Now there is research folks, okay? There's lots of it. I just pulled out a couple of studies. Now here's the problem. They really didn't start studying the effects of fluoride until the 1990s, okay? So, you know, a lot of us, were born way before the 1990s. And, you know, we've had to deal with fluoride all of that time. We didn't know it. You know, when I was a kid, everything was tap water. We didn't have bottled water. I don't even know when bottled water first became a big thing. Uh, I, I don't know. Do you know Candace offhand? Was it when the running craze really got big? I don't know. No but, idea. But now it's everywhere, not to mention the plastics, right? Okay, but the studies really didn't start until the 1990s. Now, the first really major one was in England, Surrey, England. And uh, the team leader there at the University of Surrey was Dr. Jennifer Luke. And this, I'm just gonna give you the conclusion to this because this, there's lots of studies and we can't, I don't wanna bore everybody with all of them, but look what the conclusion was, okay? The human pineal gland contains the highest concentration of fluoride in the body. So when you're ingesting 
all this fluoride from the three sources we just talked about, where is it landing more than anywhere else in your body? The pineal gland. That's why it's so important that we start eliminating it. So this one tiny little gland in the body is taking up all this fluoride. The results strengthen the hypothesis that the pineal gland has a role in the timing and the onset of puberty. That's what they were looking at in this study, the onset of puberty. Now, this was back in the 90s. Okay, that's great. Okay, but has anybody really heard about or talked about this since? Not that much. There was another study done about 10 years later. Okay, and this one was in 2006. You know, the next slide. National Research Council, they released their report, Fluoride and Drinking Water, Scientific Review of the EPA Standards. So see now, you know, the Environmental Protection Agency and the FDA and all these people, they all have so many parts per million, so many parts per billion, all of their safe areas, right? Well, we exceed those by far, uh, by an alarming rate. But they did an animal study, this single animal study, they found the pineal function indicates fluoride exposure results in altered melatonin production and altered timing of sexual maturity. So they go hand in hand and we're seeing a trend here, right? We're seeing puberty, sexual maturity, we're seeing um, melatonin production. And again, melatonin we need for proper sleep, proper REM sleep, proper healing, and also as a major antioxidant in the body. They also found that, they, that you, they had, it had hindered calcium metabolism in the body. Hmm. Hindered calcium metabolism. What does that mean? That means that calcium couldn't be processed properly through the body. And we're gonna to get to that a little bit later, but this is one of the causes of what we have found some solutions for. Parathyroid function. Thyroid uh, disease is running rampant, has been for a long time in this, in this country. The thyroid's part of the endocrine system. The pineal gland is part of the endocrine system. So we have impaired thyroid function because of the calcification of the pineal gland. Osteoporosis, primarily in postmenopausal women. Of course, cancer. Why not? It's a toxin. Fluoride is a toxin. What causes disease? Toxicity and deficiencies. Now, the toxicity in this case is the fluoride. The deficiency we'll get to in a minute or two. So what do we do? Okay, we talked about tap water. We talked about stickware, nonstick cookware. Sorry, not stickware, <laughs> nonstick cookware. But let's not forget about chlorine, okay? Because chlorine will enhance the absorption of fluoride. Now, where else are we getting bombarded with that, Candace? In our showers, right? And now you have piping hot water. Everybody loves a good hot shower, right? Now you have fluoride and chlorine, and the chlorine is just getting into the pores. The pores are opening from the heat, and the fluoride's traveling right along with the chloride, getting right into your body. So even if you do those other three things, even if you eliminate tap water, even if you eliminate nonstick cookware, if you eliminate or reduce the medications you're taking, you got to think about your showers as well. You've got to eliminate the chlorine from your shower. Fluoride, is if you can eliminate both, even better. But at the very least, eliminate the transport mechanism, the chloride, the chlorine in your water with a good shower filter that filters the chlorine. Those are all available at the Weiner Wellness Center. Those shower filters are available there. They have two different kinds. I've been buying my fill. I bought my filter there, the, the actual uh, part that screws into your shower, and then they have replacement filters for it. So you only have to buy it once and you can get, and they last 
a whole year. Six, you know, mark when you put it down. In six months, you just turn it around and it's good for another six months. So these filters are good for a year, folks. They're down at the Weiner Wellness Center. I think the whole, the whole device is under $50 and the, um, the replacement filters are under $30 and they're on sale. They're on sale at the Weiner Wellness Week. I think they're probably 20% off. Great time to get a shower filter. Get one for every bathroom in your house. I have them in my bathrooms. I have my kids have them in their bathrooms, in their houses. You know, it's just a must. And you know what you'll feel? You'll feel a difference in your skin and your hair. You'll feel it the very first day. The very first day you shower without chlorine. And I feel, you know, I get so used to it that when I travel, Candace, and I use a shower in a hotel, I mean, it could be a five-star hotel in Vegas. It doesn't matter. It's still coming out with hot chlorine and you feel a difference immediately. Your hair, especially, you'll feel a difference immediately. It'll dry out because it's not used to chlorine going to dry it out. So get these shower filters down at the Weiner Wellness Center. Okay, so let's now talk about the number one deficiency. The toxicity is fluoride for the pineal gland. The deficiency that's accelerating it is one of our favorite vitamins, vitamin K2. If there is one vitamin that can help prevent and even some experts feel reverse the calcification of the pineal gland, it's vitamin K2. Now, let's look at the issue here. The issue is number one, we've only known about, we've only had vitamin K2 in a really absorbable form. In the MK7 form, which is in all the Nutritional Frontiers products where K2 exists. We've only known about that for a few years. And we've only known about K2 itself as a supplement. We've only had it available as a supplement in the last 10 years. Before that, you had to get it through your food. You had to get it through dietary sources. Now, the expert on this, the guy that wrote the book on it is Dr. Weston Price. He wrote the book. He's the expert. He knew what it was. He identified it. But he called it... Um, uh, what do you call it? Um, nutrient X or something like that. Compound X, nutrient X. He didn't realize what it was and, and, what for, and in what stage or in what form the vitamin was at that point. So then we found out. Okay, let's fast forward. What he did, what Weston Price did was he, he traveled all over the world and he worked with all of these, these um, uh, people and civilizations that were not as advanced as some of the other ones, okay? They were farming. They were eating what they farmed. They weren't drinking Coca-Cola. They weren't drinking uh, fluoridated water. Everything came from the ground. Everything came from the earth. He noticed they had no bone issues. He noticed they had no teeth issues. You know, the highest source of calcium in your body should be your bones and teeth. But when you don't have that, the opposite of that is the calcium has to go somewhere. And it settles in our blood and in our glands. When somebody has kidney stones, they're calcium based. We know somebody that has tonsil stones. I didn't even know that existed till a short time ago. They're calcium. Okay, the calcium in your blood is called atherosclerosis. The lack of calcium in your bones is osteoporosis. And the calcium that builds in your glands, the calcification of your glands, primarily the pineal gland, is destroying those glands. Now, what they have found, and some of the really interesting things I've been reading, is that the microcrystalline a microcrystalline um, hydroxyapatite crystals, calcium crystals hold more fluoride 
than any other part of the body. So the fluoride, the calcium is gonna latch onto that fluoride and then it's gotta rest somewhere. The highest concentration of fluoride in the entire body is the pineal gland. So let's go back to vitamin K2. Dr. Price, he found that the bones were great, the teeth were great, and he had this magic nutrient, Activator X, that's what he called it. Activator, I knew sooner or later, the brain would work. So it's vitamin K2. Now there's really only two sources of vitamin K2 in our diet. Okay, one is grass-fed beef products. The other is naturally fermented foods. So as we all know, we stopped eating grass-fed beef products 30, 40 years ago, corn-fed everything, corn-fed, grain-fed, tastes great, the best steaks in the world. All the cows went from eating grass to eating grain and corn. Well, here's the problem. You've heard of vitamin K1, right? Vitamin K1 is in green leafy vegetables. Now, when a cow or an animal, a sheep, a goat eats grass, its system ferments that grass, that K1, into vitamin K2. It's a fermentation process. When we eat products of those animals, beef, sheep, goat, beef, they're grass-fed, eat the cheese, eat the butter, the meat. When you eat those things, you get the benefit of that fermentation process. That's where you get vitamin K2. Now, because it's a fermentation process, you can do it yourself. You could take things like cabbage, like pickles, um, any green, and you can ferment it. You can turn that cabbage into sauerkraut. You can turn cucumbers into pickles. They're gonna be loaded with vitamin K2. Now, everybody's not doing that on a regular basis, are they? Everybody's still not eating grass-fed beef products on a regular basis. You know, I went so far, Candace, as to substitute one of my, you know, my favorite cheeses of all time, Parmesan Reggiano, and I, I substituted it with Pecorino Romano, okay, from sheep's milk. Just as good, maybe even better. Right? So there are alternatives out there, okay? There are alternatives. Don't, you know, buy canned sauerkraut. I don't know how much K2 you're going to get there. You want to make it, make it yourself. Get a head of cabbage, chop it up, add some Himalayan pink salt, squeeze it until it's wet and juicy, shove it down into a jar, seal it, cover it for three days. You have sauerkraut. It's that easy. But there's other ways to get vitamin K2. And we have some amazing products with vitamin K2 made by Nutritional Frontiers and available down at the Weiner Wellness Center all this week at 30% off, 30% off. Because we know we're not gonna get it in our diet, folks. Okay, I know you're not out there buying grass-fed beef products or grass-fed beef in and of itself. I had a doctor tell me, one that we worked with, that if you add four ounces, just four ounces of grass-fed beef four times a week, you would get your supply of vitamin K2. How about that? Who's doing it though? Now, everybody's not gonna do it. They're still gonna buy all the other cheap meats. So get your vitamin K2 in a good quality supplement. <clears throat> yes, can you get it from fermented foods? Yes, but how often are you gonna do that? As much as I enjoyed making my sauerkraut, I make it once a year maybe. I'm not gonna make it. I'm gonna get my vitamin K2 in supplement form. So what do we have? Okay, we have K, we have super K2 plus. If you want to move ahead a little bit, I've just kind of been going through these as I've been talking. We, we already covered that. Here we go. K2 plus. Oop, go back one. Super K2 plus. Now this is the premier formula for vitamin K2 because it has two very important cofactors and that's D3 and vitamin A. Super K2 Plus from Nutritional Frontiers, available at the Weiner Wellness Center, staple in my protocol. I use it. I have my daughters using it. It's great for your teeth. It's great for your bones, just like Dr. Weston Price told us 
a long time ago. Super K2 Plus has the perfect ratio. You're getting 5,000 IUs of D3, which is now, I believe, 250 micrograms, right, Candace? You get 5,000 of vitamin A. This is one of those other vilified vitamins, folks, I've been talking about for a long time. Why? Because it's fat soluble. People say you can get too much of it and be toxic. I don't believe it. There's no way that a vitamin can be toxic. That's my opinion. But you need vitamin A because we've looked at this. We've done shows on it. Candace and I have done shows, radio shows, where we saw that every major illness, so-called disease from measles on down, was a vitamin A deficiency, included a vitamin A deficiency. It's, it's imperative for your immune system. So this formula, Super K2 Plus, you get vitamin A, you get D3, and you get vitamin K2 in the form of that MK7. And folks, not just a few micrograms, like you'll see in some products, 500 micrograms. So you're going to be able to get your supply of K2 in a very, very affordable way, complete with two other primary nutrients. Now, why is that trio so important? That trio is so important. You're gonna get the K2, which is going to help prevent and maybe reverse calcification of your pineal gland. But you're also gonna get two cofactors for bones and teeth. D3 helps with building new bone, keeping your teeth strong. Vitamin A helps to remove the old, the old bone brittle tissue so that new bone can be built. Super K2 Plus, always, it should be a staple right now. You need it for your pineal gland, you need it for your teeth, you need it for your bones. Super Cal Plus has K2 in it as well. Now this is our basic bone building form. It's not basic in any way, okay? It's got multiple forms of calcium. It's got magnesium, K2, D3, boron, it's got everything that you need for good quality bone building. So that's a great one-two punch, but it has K2 in it. And then our new multivitamin, the one that's taken this industry by storm, Women's Complete, got an ample amount of vitamin K2 in it as well, all in the form of, M of MK7. So there are three different ways right there you can get your vitamin K2. Pick one that suits you best. Use that. That's where you're going to get the ample amount of K2. And there's see, it's still the only nutrient that has the ability to, number one, prevent calcification. And as some experts even think, it has the ability to reverse the calcification and uh, improve the health of the pineal gland that's being destroyed by fluoride that has the amazing ability to hold on to calcium and deposit it right in your pineal gland. Also, it's really important. Fluoride is one of the main uh, toxins that enables, not enables, but causes the body to hold on to aluminum, Candace. So when we, when we saw earlier in the slides, Alzheimer's being one of the um, uh, results of poor pineal gland function? Well, now we know why. Because fluoride, in addition to calcifying the pineal gland, causes your body to hold on to aluminum. And that's, of course, going to do damage to the brain and all these neurological disorders as well. So now, in the background, I don't know if you could, uh, if you could hear it, but I'm going to turn it up for a second. probably still can't hear it, but it's kind of mild right now. But there are frequencies that are available. They're available on YouTube for free. They are called the solfeggio frequencies. Now, I'm very big in the, in the vibration, and uh, you guys all know I've been uh, studying vibration and frequency for medicine for some time now, and I love it. But there are six, some say seven, major solfeggio frequencies. They're different sounds, different vibration, different frequencies. And they coordinate with different parts of the body. Some are esoteric, some are physical. Some of the ones that I listen to a lot, 528 hertz, 
um, is good for the for for regeneration, for healing, good for heart, good for uh, blood vessel health. Every part of your body, every part of your body gives off a frequency or has a home frequency. Every every function, every gland, every organ has a corresponding frequency. This is what uh, Jeff does all day long at the Weiner Wellness Center. It's what he does all day long with kinesiology. It's another form of frequency vibrational medicine. So if you want to do something a little extra, a little esoteric, look these up. The two frequencies that actually have a direct impact on the pineal gland are 2675 and 10,000. So that gives you just something a little extra to do on the way to improving your pineal gland, improving your third eye, removing calcium, get rid of the fluoride in all the ways we talked about, get rid of the toxin, add and relieve the deficiency with vitamin K2, and then for good measure, add in one of these frequencies. Listen to it at night, listen to it when you're in your office. I have it on in the background all the time. It can't hurt, it can only help. So if you do all these things, Kansas, sorry, called you Kansas that time. Sometimes it just comes out. We, we can promise thank Mike you. for that one. <laughs> yeah, we can thank Mike for that. But we do promise you folks, you will live long. We're going to add healthy in there. Live long, healthy, and prosper. That was awesome, Joe. I just have one question uh, from someone asking, which is worse, tap water or well water? Or which tap is water. the less of two evils? <laughs> tap water. Tap water is worse. By far okay. the worst of all the choices. Okay. All right. Awesome. This is great. Very informative. And, you know, when we look at disease, we see that it comes from two things, nutrient deficiencies and um, toxicity. Toxic. And this right. definitely adds to our toxic load. So since we're exposed to it, um, we've been exposed to it. We need to go back and listen to Jamie's presentation about detoxing and take your tips. Joe, you have a, like a solution for every excuse someone has every place you can be exposed. Um, so those are great, uh, tips for people to start implementing into their life and, uh, try to avoid it as much, uh, when possible. You know, when you go to a restaurant, you can ask for bottled water. You can ask for bottled mineral water like Pellegrino or Perrier or just flat bottled water. So you don't have to drink that glass of water with fluoridated ice cubes that they put on your table. You know, and, and if you want to have a little cocktail, we'll make it wine because there's no added fluoridated water to that. So there are ways to get around it. <laughs> like I said, you got a solution for Always got a solution. every case. So <laughs> thanks so much, Joe. This was awesome. My pleasure. And, uh, we'll see you again later this week. All right. See you guys.